lot better. Okay. Awesome. My name is Reed Burke, um, and I'm here to talk to you guys about um, Happy and how we use a module called Joy. And I'm going to spend about half the talk talking about um, where we use Happy, um, a little bit about give you some context and then explain uh, really just my favorite feature about uh, Joy and encourage you hopefully to go and, and check out Joy for yourself. So um, I work at Yahoo. Um, Joy is uh, hopefully at the end of the talk you'll see that Joy is useful uh, in Happy, of course, because all you folks have used it, I'm sure, if you uh, are at this conference. And if not, um, you really should be. And uh, we also use it in things outside, and I'm going to share about that for a little bit. So um, if you are interested in the slides or want to know more, uh, find me after the talk, uh, or you can get uh, find me online on Twitter and GitHub uh, at Reed. So I work for the uh, MASH team at uh, Yahoo, and what we do on this on this team, that's the name of our team, uh, we actually we work on build system for the whole company. So um, everything at Yahoo um, is actually built in like one, we're, we're the team that is essentially responsible for um, if you want to deploy code or deploy um, whether it's an app or a website, whatever it is, um, it used to be that you would have to do this, um, you would have to have someone dedicated in your group doing this. And instead now, the entire company is being built on uh, the same system, which uh, we've done this over a period of, uh, believe it or not, three months. We moved everyone from uh, many different version control systems to Git, just that's all. Um, and uh, it's it's crazy but also great because now um, you know we used to have folks um, we we're trying to encourage folks to come you know use the centralized system now you they just have to but it's also really great because um, not just because they have to but because it actually provides a lot of benefit and that's something that I think instead of having uh, hundreds of people literally hundreds of people um, trying to solve this problem themselves they we, we get to um, work with those folks so that they can it frees them up to, to do what they're best at doing and then we get to work on the uh, centralized thing. So um, give you an idea of what we do. We have uh, the system that I work on, which is one of five uh, systems, and all of them are being consolidated into ours. Uh, ours is responsible for 6,000 builds per day, four, five to 6,000 builds a day, and the whole, the whole company is uh, like at, in the tens of thousands. Um, everything's built from Git, like I said. Everything is built uh, with Jenkins, and we're definitely the largest installation of Jenkins anywhere. Uh, you either are building your own thing or, um, or you're crazy like us. And so um, the, the things that we hear all the time from people, and this is like people would be spending so much time maintaining their own CI system, whatever it was, typically Jenkins, that um, they weren't able to, they were just kind of tread water and keep their, their head above water. And so the, the biggest questions that we get now that they don't have to do that anymore, and they uh, really want more out of, you know, they look at, we look at what's available uh, outside of, you know, uh, like what, what other folks are doing with CI. And, um, and we, we think we can even improve on that. The, the biggest thing is, as you're deploying things continuously, where, where's the status of this commit, not the status of a build number, right? Um, now, when you, have, um, when you get out of having just a small system and, and get to a, a large system where you have many builds, it's difficult to understand where a change set moves um, or where artifacts move across an entire large system. And so, um, so build numbers are pretty terrible. Why, and also, when a build fails, or there's, it's, there's a block in getting your thing out to production, why did it fail? And so I work on a system um, that uses Happy that's called Cinch, and so it's one part of, uh, of our team. Um, and it's commit-centric view of deployment. That's, that's basically what it is. It answers why things failed, um, and it's uh, like an API that's used by uh, other teams to create like dashboards and also just like our build status pages and other things. And so um, the architecture of this, uh, real real quick, is um, it's a Happy server in V8. We moved to it. It took um, It did take me about three or four hours to, to migrate from, uh, so let's see, V6 to V8. Um, and uh, it's, not, it's not that bad. All the changes, I think, are wonderful. So, um, so I, I, I'm really, by the way, I just want to say I'm really happy that uh, Happy decides to make uh, breaking changes that make sense and are really well thought out. Um, and they have really great release notes. So um, anyway, uh, that's, even though they're breaking changes, I'm really happy to see them. Um, so we have uh, everything as plugins. This seems to be a common theme. I'm really happy to hear that uh, everyone's doing this. We have all of our web services in a plugin. Uh, we have something that subscribes to all information about builds. Every log line is, is something that's an item in our queue. Um, and then something that provides metrics. So we have a plugin that adapts Happy's events to metrics. Um, 
Then we also, so we use Redis as a, as a queue and also as a shared like uh, cache uh, among all of our node instances. So out of uh, all, the, like this, this, uh, this slide here, we probably have 60 of these instances that are all processing data from like five Jenkins masters that are all feeding data into it. Uh, and that's happening through a Jenkins plugin. So we have a plugin that's all it's doing is pushing information to Redis. And then uh, what, what we get out of uh, on the node side is just handling that throwing it into a database and um, then having everyone hit it to get their reason why their build failed and where their commit is. So it kind of takes you know, what's coming off of this uh, you know, build and inverting it so that you can query everything by your uh, code check-in. Um, so an example of what you know, uh, folks you know, would do if we didn't have happy and what we see a lot in, in other, other uh, places that we have some value and then you're doing this all the time. And it's never this simple, but you, this winds up being horrible for a lot of reasons uh, when we have joy as an alternative. So instead with joy, we get to do this and hopefully this isn't uh, new to anyone. But what's great about this is that this, uh, when you have this everywhere, you could just take the object inside of here and then just put it in a shared place and then wind up, uh, if you ever need, expect the same result. You can, instead of copying and pasting or having a, a function, you wind up having a, um, an object that's very descriptive. Um, and so when you, when you have changes too, this is great. So instead of writing changes, like say if uh, um, foo will become something else um, because we're, um, say we have Baz now, right, as a, as a thing that's, uh, uh, we, we, we renamed something. One example that's more real that doesn't fit on the slide though is we, we changed something for commit SHA uh, to commit SHA1 because some things were using commit SHA, some older versions, and some were using commit underscore SHA1. And so we wanted to support both. Um, and so um, something that we wind up, um, uh, like a, a prevalent idea at Yahoo that, that's changing really quickly is the fact that uh, you can't, is, is like you think of, you know, when we have breaking changes, we're just going to deploy all these things and at one go. We're going to um, take down the old system and, and restore with a new system uh, and do that by rotating, um, you know, these giant subsystems out of, out of a rotation and just have the old system running for a while and kill them off. And then we have the new system, which is all deployed together, like, on, and, and that doesn't work. Like, we don't want to, to do this. Instead, everything uh, needs to be more loosely coupled instead of very tightly coupled together. So we want to support different things, uh, different, sometimes different schemas at the same time. So uh, if this is the case, uh, we wind up being able to use Joy to do, again, this is a very simple example, but winds up being very powerful um, in a large system. We could just support both and still have like our new configuration. And, uh, and we just wind up chaining a lot of these uh, together as necessary and then killing this off. Again, by having continuous deployment, we don't have to have this rename in there forever. We could just get rid of it after a short period of time. Um, so yeah, we use this everywhere, not just in, um, uh, not just in our happy application, but also there's other things that uh, also are handling data from Jenkins, and so it's able to verify that the um, you know we we have many instances of Jenkins that all run different plugin versions that pass different data to Redis, and so this verifies the data is correct in the format that we expect. We found tons of issues with uh, um, uh, in various parts of our systems by using Joy, and uh, it's it's amazing. Um, and it's also very easy to read. I think it's a very uh, readable API, and I really take, uh, I really think that the um, folks who are maintaining Joy are doing a really great job with making sure that the API stays uh, at a very high uh, bar. Um, code coverage is also a benefit that you get if you're using a lab uh, with um, and trying to get 100% code coverage as I am. Um, like using this is a, a much preferred to something like this, where if you have a lot of these, it could be difficult to hit everything that you're checking. And you might be thinking, well, you want to be able to check all these things, and that's true. But um, you, you might want to. But I, th I also think that uh, you should only really be checking or writing tests for things that you're more likely to break. And instead of having to write this over and over again, I would encourage you to be using uh, Joy, where instead you are only checking to see if an error ever happened and not if uh, every single possible validation error ever happened. Um, leave that to uh, Joy's own tests, um, which you know it's very well tested. So then you don't have to check for common mistakes to get a high level of coverage. Um, and then also, like this is an example just lifted straight out of, if, if you guys aren't familiar with, uh, with Joy, this is just lifted straight out of um, the Joy README um, that shows that this isn't just for strings. You can, it's very expressive and it's, uh, um, I find that once you start using it, it, it becomes very easy to read. And not just for me, but also for machines. And so we've seen uh, 
um, people talking about Lout today. If you guys haven't used Lout, it can read this uh, information in your uh, happy route configs and uh, show you formatted documentation. We also seen Swagger today, which also reads this, which is great. Um, and uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it provides benefits for people and for um, uh, creating your APIs. So in Happy, particularly, um, you know, so you'd use this, you'd use Joy for your request schemas. I'd also encourage you, and I haven't seen a lot of examples of this, and your response schemas. And so what this has uh, allowed us to do is prevent sharing too much. We might get more information uh, as we proxy something from another system, or we're getting information out of a database. We might be getting more than we expect. And so with, um, by using a response schema with Strimpunk known, uh, we can remove things that we don't expect or don't want to share uh, with our uh, people who consume our API. And uh, we can also, uh, you know, kind of uh, massage values into the right place by using rename. So if there is something that's legacy coming from an upstream system, we can just take that into the correct format and hand that off. Uh, we also use something like the last talk, uh, actually, to have different API versions, which is uh, also useful. So this, we could serve something old to the old version and then rename it for the new uh, version using response schemas and other. Th uh, so. Um, let's see, also uh, Lout is great. Um, I want to put it in big text here so you don't miss it. Um, <laughs> um, and I, I really hope that this gets uh, even better. I'm looking forward to, uh, like uh, I've tried to use Swagger before and it just seems like it's a, it's a lot um, and Lout isn't a whole bunch. It's just, it's very small. It doesn't depend on um, other like front end framework things that allow you to, to give you the nice try it out button. Um, so I'm hoping that, I know like Swagger has a lot of work that's happening with it. Uh, the last time I checked, like a few months ago, I'm just uh, like, this is great. I'm, I'm like really trying to sell my team on, uh, and, and with great success on how great uh, having a consistent API is, um, where you don't have to have um, API comments that go out of date. Instead, you can use Lout and it's very, uh, uh, things stay up to date. So for the things that I want to use, uh, not the future of, ha of uh, Joy, but the things that I want to do with it, is having um, schemas that are shared. And so uh, the big thing here is, um, Right now, sometimes we have duplication in our schemas. Sometimes, uh, like you know, one of our plugins and one of, and our API don't share the same schema all the time. Um, uh, cause there's nothing in common uh, between there, I suppose. That like a like we don't have a schema node module, um, and so I'd really like there for there to be a way to share that because we've gotten into bugs where schemas uh, deviate, and so one system won't accept the others. Uh, output and vice versa, and uh, that's a really big pain. And so it's possible, and this is a lot better. It's a lot easier to find bugs now that everything's in an object instead of everything being in a whole bunch of conditionals. So, um, so this is the logical next step. Uh, and also, um, all of our um, how everyone. I don't have enough time to get into like how awesome this is, basically. But if you, everyone have used Travis, Wrecker, uh, Circle CI, you're used to defining all, everything you want to happen in your build with a configuration file. And indeed, the, that's true. Even though we use Jenkins, we actually use Node to script uh, creating Jenkins jobs and uh, deleting them and everything. It's, it's awesome. And it's, um, it's actually limited, right? So instead of being able to do whatever you want, we have archetypes. Say if you're trying to build a Node app, then we will automatically run all the default things that make sense. Running npm install, npm test. When you're ready to publish, it publishes the thing using the standard way that everything at Yahoo's published. So, um, so you just have a single file. But so we have a validator for this, and um, I'm hoping that we could leverage uh, Joy more in, in these things that are um, where it's, it would be really complicated and possibly would require uh, some contributions to things either that are built on top of. Um, joy that we hope to open source for like say taking something that's in YAML and having like a nice um, uh, like explanation of what's going to happen with your build configuration and have using joy for that so we haven't started on this but I'm really looking forward to that I think it's a logical next step um, so recap uh, the biggest thing here is uh, rename I think that's that's my favorite thing so if you learn nothing else like take advantage of that and uh, Joy is useful outside of Happy, and you should uh, consider it for even if you're not able to use Happy um, for any app that you're writing, whether it's a web app or just a simple library. Um, great. So uh, this is my team. They're pretty awesome, and we wish you were a part of them because we have lots of ice cream, and it's fantastic. This is me, and come talk to me if you have questions. Thanks so much. <laughs>